What's up YouTube, ODST General back again, and today guys I've got the Tactical Nugget Sack, or Nug Sack, from, uh, from the Optra April Fools here, and we're going to be going to this uh, car sales event of Warthogs. we got all sorts of Warthogs to show off to you guys today. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a little bit separate because these are pushed to the dev build. The old Warthogs were removed and they've been replaced with the Reach variants for all of them now. Um, these are still work in progress as you guys may have noticed already There's still a few things like the uh, the turrets don't necessarily match the texture of the vehicle um, Some camera angles might be a little bit wonky So there's still some work in progress stuff with these now with that being said This is all very awesome. So let's go ahead and check them out So first up we have the APC hog now previously this was a insurrectionist only vehicle um, as of right now in this current build, it's sitting actually as a UNSC only vehicle. Uh, so they've kind of flipped roles a little bit, but basically this is a fully armored variant of the Warthog. So you've got uh, armor around the, uh, the driver, the passenger, of course the rear passengers have armor. Um, now, turning out was fixed. I haven't actually tried this. I'm kind of curious if this is going to work, but I'm kind of curious if you can turn out in. If so, what does it do? Um, I accidentally switched seats there, so turning out does not. Ooh, that's weird. Um, I don't know if this is a bug or not. That's gonna be a camera bug because when you turn out the yeah the character sitting in the back right now, but he's um, when you turn out it actually puts the camera up front. There we go. So yeah, it, you can't turn out. You can turn out if you're in the back, but again, that's uh, that's just a bug or whatever. Um, and then the camera is just a bit wonky right now. So this is probably the worst thing with the cameras and stuff. We do have, of course, the unarmed Warthog, uh, in this case with the uh, the black texture. And uh, we've seen that already. And, of course, the uh, the standard Warthog with the green texture, which is kind of like the original Optrade green. Uh, then we've got the uh, Towhog. Ooh, I just realized something. I don't have... Uh, sorry guys, ahead of time for this. I don't have, uh, hearing protection. But basically, you got your, uh, your tow missiles, your ATGM launcher. Actually, I just realized something. I'm an idiot. Uh, I've got personal arsenal. I didn't need to reload. I just wanted to be lazy and not have to reload. And I realized I don't have to do that. Um, thankfully that one doesn't seem too terribly bad, but some of these get pretty loud, so let's go ahead and get that on. Alright, there we go, now we've got hearing protection in. Uh, so then we've got the Goss Hog. And, uh, both of these I didn't actually show it off in that last one. have, uh, picture in picture with first person, so you can actually see that there and up on the top there where it's got infrared. Uh, the other one's got a, I think it's got a night vision mode, I'm not sure. This one's got night vision and infrared modes. We'll have uh, sound design from the Optrade team too there, I believe. Uh, then we've got the anti-air Warthog. Now, unfortunately, this one only does fire from the one side. Uh, so it needs to be fixed with some scripting stuff. That's a little bit beyond Thomas's capability to make it fire from both sides, but that's something that'll happen down the road. Uh, and then that brings us already to the Insurrectionist variants, which are all uh, just black paint jobs on all these. Or kind of that off. To me, it looks like an off green, but they're labeled as black, and it depends on the lighting. The lighting seems to make a pretty big difference. Uh, but basically, these are all the same variants. The uh, only difference is the Indies don't have the APC hog, the uh, the Goss hog, and yeah, I think those are the only two that they don't have. They yeah, they've got the tow hog. Yeah, it's just the uh, the APC and the Goss. I don't know if they'll be getting variants of those later on down the road or not. Um, but for right now, this is what they have. Then we've got the civilian warhog. So there's a bunch of new civilian warhogs. Now this is actually kind of neat because these do have a slight, slight difference. But they've actually got functioning mirrors on here, which the other warhogs don't have any functioning mirrors. So if you hop in here, it actually activates the mirrors. You can't see it on the outside of the vehicle, but these are really nice looking mirrors. I don't know if that's a picture in picture thing that they're doing there to get that to work and like kind of help with performance or whatnot. But um, it works really well. I definitely dig it. Got the black and uh, yellow striped variants, a gray variant, a blue variant, 
and a racing variant, which looks kind of like a uh, Italian paint job there with the uh, the red, green, and white. I don't know if this one's any faster or not than the other Warthog variants, but it's all pretty sweet. So then we're going to run all the way back down to the table here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and change weapons for, well, actually get a weapon. I shouldn't say change weapons. We don't have a weapon. But... We're going to set ourselves a weapon up here. So there's a, a new weapon that came out with us as well as fixes, 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 fixes to the uh, M99. But the SRM came out as well on the dev branch. So we're going to go ahead and check that out here. And we're going to, oh, sorry, set to mod. Perfect. So yeah, we're going to head on down here. So we've got the SRM and we're going to just pull that bad boy out. So by default, it doesn't have a scope, but it does have a custom built scope, which here you guys can see that there. Uh, it does work with the rail system, so you can set up laser pointer or a, a UTG defender, and of course it works with bipods, and personally I like the NATO bipods just because they're uh, nice big looking bipods, and uh, for a big gun like this it just looks better. So, you can see that works. Actually, it's gone first person. Get a first person look at that scope, but yeah, you guys can see that here. Comes with a uh, 10 round magazine. And uh, we're kind of at a position here where we can't really shoot these balloons too well. Yeah, you guys can see this has a very high fire rate. Um, doesn't do a huge amount against vehicles or anything, it seems. It's a 50 cal round, but yeah, not a huge amount against vehicles. Now. Like I said, the M99 also had some fixes here, and as you guys can see, it's no longer in a constant firing state. So if we take the M99 here, uh, we can go ahead and take its built-in bipod, which sticks way through this table and looks kind of hilarious, but it works. And yeah, these are pretty tough warthogs, as you can see. It did take a round from the stanchion. Of course, you give it two rounds from a stanchion. It's probably hurting pretty bad. Three. I'm actually really surprised. Last time I shot this thing three times, it died. There we go. And you got some missiles firing off from the uh, either the tow hog or the uh, anti air hog. I'm not sure which. Oh man, they are still going like crazy. Holy cow. Definitely should have uh, gotten myself a piece of armor or something to sit behind, but man, that is a fireworks show. Anyways, that's all the stuff in Jeff build now, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, either wrap the video up here or leave it back to myself, depending on how things go with this, because there's a bunch of other news to talk about, and I don't know what order I'm doing this in. This is getting recorded first, because I just happen to have some time to hop into armor, and there's kids screaming in the background. Alright guys, uh, take it easy, I'll leave it to either me or leave it to the end. See you guys around. All right, guys, I want to take the video back for myself. Um, I'm just really struggling to get in this mindset of recording. Uh, I did not really record at all last week because I had a, a cold and I was coughing and stuffy nose and could barely talk. And I tried recording a video and I'll actually probably release one video, but it was really tough to record it. And something like this where there's a lot more talking and stuff and it's a lot more concentrated was just a little too difficult for me with the, the head cold I had. Um, with that being said, it's been almost a month since my last Optrade news update. Um, there's been several dev build updates. As you guys saw, there was a bunch of stuff added that I had kind of as a prelude video that is included in here. And then there's been a couple of updates since I did that video. So we're going to be taking a look at this past no patch notes, uh, taking a look at some pictures of some of the stuff that was added in there. I don't have all the footage or images of all the things that were added. Um, but I will cover some of it, and then there was a bunch of work-in-progress stuff. Um, so, before I get started, though, there was supposed to be a little bit more. Uh, Zada, unfortunately, has left the dev team, so I was going to cover a bunch of his stuff. Uh, however, he is leaving, unfortunately, so things like his Cobra and all this other stuff that he was working on will uh, not be going into the mod, I'm assuming. So, uh, I have just removed that content, and it's not going to be in this video. Anyways, the first thing we have up is the dev notes from 5721, and this was posted by Thomas. The M41 saw changes with the addition of tube removal and spinning. The M08 or M808S fixed floating faces and added coaxial gun movement. Uh, the Warthog saw final iteration, 
added hit points, fixed fire geometry, shadows, and normals. And the SRM-5 round magazine and barrel recoil was added for that. Uh, then we had an additional update, which followed just a few days later on the 11th, uh, for Operation Trebuchet Dev Build that saw the Medical Hog added and the Any APC Hog. And then for Operation Trebuchet First Contact, the Tyrant textures were fixed. Uh, two Tyrant variants were added. One of them engages only aircraft, and the other one is also an artillery piece. Uh, so both of those are really awesome. There was some artillery stuff in the initial one, but they didn't know if they could get it to work. It looks like it's actually been fixed and is implemented on that, so that's really awesome. I do really approve of that. Um, because the Tyrant just looks like an artillery piece. It looks like a giant, massive Covenant artillery piece. Um, then we also have some new Elite textures, which Bradster posted about. And I will show those off a little bit later in the video during the first contact portion. And then decrease the damage of the fuel rod cannon so Banshee is no longer one-shot tanks. So swapping over to some of the images and work in progress stuff that we have, we've got a few pictures of the uh, Insurrectionist Medical Hawk. So we've got a white variant and a green variant of those. Um, we've also got a standard Warhog, which actually isn't the Medical Hog, but it shows the turnout and the front seat working. So when you actually turn out, the guy stands up and is standing over the, uh, the opened area of the Warhog. So... That's a nice feature. I'm happy that that was added. Uh, then we see the interior for a new work in progress vehicle, the M794 Badger. Now this is actually something that we've talked about, oh, I don't know, years ago. Um, I can't remember exactly when the Badger was first announced, but this was a work in progress by Drake Darren to be a uh, variant of tank. Uh, I'm not sure if at the time if it was intended to be an insurrectionist tank, but it's been designed to be an insurrectionist tank now. Uh, kind of inspired by the initial Halo CE version of the Scorpion, or uh, very, very early like concepts for the Scorpion, I should say. But uh, pretty cool stuff here. It's going to be a basically a lighter, smaller Scorpion tank, and uh, that should be pretty neat. And I've got not only the interior, but we've got some exterior pictures and footage of it. So we've got uh, footage of this thing driving around. The textures and materials are not final. Uh, it will be sitting in dev build until that stuff has a chance to be updated because that was not done using the current uh, material sets and uh, design path that they use for stuff nowadays. Um, however, they did want to get that project in game, so it's been added into, or it's being added into dev builds. Uh, Thomas has been working on it, and we'll eventually see that add into dev build and then. At some point down the road, it will get a texture and material overhaul. Uh, presumably, the tracks will be redone, and then we'll see it being implemented into the mod at that point. Uh, sticking with tanks, we then have the uh, Scorpion tank with a small short video showing off independent suspension, which I believe has already been added in a dev build. I actually haven't had a chance to follow up and check this one. Unfortunately, I've been very busy and I've not really had any time to play Arma outside of a very brief point playing uh, Prairie Fire when that came out. But even then, I haven't really had a chance to go back and play that. Um, aside from that, though, we also have some work from Oshin here. Uh, we got to take a little bit of a look at the Sabre. Now this is going to be some newer stuff to a lot of you guys. These are some work in progress textures, but I do believe Oshin said these things are already out of date. Uh, nonetheless, really cool stuff. Obviously a lot of people very excited for the Sabre, and um, yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting to see this thing finalized and finished, so hopefully uh, we'll get to see the newer, more recent textures at some point in the not too distant future. Uh, then that brings us over to uh, ground equipment, which we see some work from Freeman. Uh, his ammo packets are getting a update, so we see the original ammo packet model in blue here. 
and then we see the new ones in gray which you can tell there's a lot more detail in it i do believe he said jedi nick had helped out with this i can't remember for sure if he said that's who it was but i'm pretty sure that was the case um but we see variants of this with a yellow version for the br a blue version for the pistol and a green version for the smg and presumably there would be other versions for it as well that we haven't necessarily seen or that will be getting added down the road at some point um so that's pretty cool uh, then sticking with Freeman, Freeman and Milton are working on getting a traffic cone that was done a while back implemented into games, so it's getting materials, textures, and then Milton will be implementing this for his dev entry project, from what I understand. Um, and again, you know, like the ammo packets, this isn't going to be game-changing. It's not going to be some vital core gameplay that's going to change the way we all play Optray. But it's a nice little immersive piece. It's a great little tiny prop design that you can plop down during a mission. It's not going to like really change things drastically, but it'll just help make you feel slightly more like you're in the future. And I am all for stuff like that every time. So then that brings us over to First Contact, and we have a ton of big news for First Contact. Well, a few things that are really big. So this, the first thing is we've got some images of the CRS cruiser, which Drake is picking back up, and he is going to try and get this basically ready to be used as a static prop as soon as possible. I do believe he said it won't have any collision or anything like that, but basically it is just going to be something that you can throw up into the sky as a prop. Um, somebody may end up doing scripting or something that allows you to basically attach this to the uh, glassing beam or something that uh, Jack War had in his mod, but I don't know if we'll see that or not. That would be something cool that I'm hoping somebody will do, but who knows. Um, and then we just have an alternative angle of that from the bottom. Then we also have a look at those new Elite textures as promised. So this was once again shared by Bradster, and uh, that was kind of a surprise. I didn't know Bradster was even really around or still active at this point, but uh, these things are looking even more and more slick every time I see them. You know, it's hard to believe that they can get better and then they get a whole lot better significantly so um i guess that's partially because i saw the old elites and just everything seems like such a vast improvement on that it's hard to believe you can really go any further up after the improvements that were made there um at any rate though probably the biggest news for first contact was the announcement of the wraith tank being a work in progress so this thing has developed pretty rapidly drake was nearly finished with the model and so he shared this um, a little bit back, and then we've already had uh, this thing nearly ready to go in game. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. So we have a number of untextured model shots of it, as well as its variants. So you have like the standard wraith tank, the anti-air wraith tank, and like a turreted version of the wraith, which should be a pretty interesting thing to see. Which is more of like a conventional tank, I think, is what it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, it's definitely an interesting thing. And then we see several videos of this and textures and stuff like that, which I want to go over. But basically, you guys can see they added the reticule for it. They've got it textured in-game. They have it set up with a turret, so you can actually see the elite sitting in the turret. Um, just looking all sorts of good. You guys can see the textures for it with the, uh, the different purple textures and kind of pinkish textures for the different variants here. Um... And then, yeah, the video, like I said. So we have video of the Wraith tank just kind of initially getting implemented. And it's still uh, kind of a conceptual vehicle. The dev team is still trying to work out what they can and can't do with the Wraith tank to try and get it as accurate to the Halo games as possible um, while still working within the confines of Arma. So making it feel like it's floating, um, yet yeah, still able to move around, function, and not do all sorts of wonky weird stuff in Arma's engine, which of course is a challenge all of its own. Uh, and we get to see the, uh, the gunner being operated. And uh, yeah, and then some sound testing with it. So that's all very cool stuff. 
Um, very, very excited for the Wraith tank. Obviously, it's going to be a huge thing for a lot of people. Um, more and more Covenant stuff getting added all the time. Of course, that's been a big limiting factor for the Covenant thus far. Is been a lack of variety in units. So we've had the Elites for a long time, and then they started getting more weapons, which it really helped things a lot. But, you know, for a lot of people, that still wasn't quite good enough just because, you know, you're still only fighting one type of enemies. Then we had Shields which kind of allows you to do some variety, having some with shields, some without, so you can kind of tweak the base stats of health and things like that to affect the flow of gameplay. And then, you know, you go from there, and now, you know, we've got things like the the Spirit Dropship, and we're, we're looking at getting the Wraith, and having different varieties of Wraith, having these uh, these Tyrant guns and stuff, it's, it's all fantastic. I'm just excited about all of it. Um, so that's really cool stuff. And then we go over to community so this is kind of community kind of optray news this is being worked on by schizo and he's got a couple of different things he's working on here and these are being done for gamma but they may end up in main optray depending on how things go as most of his projects but just because this is kind of uh one of those things that could be to gamma first or potentially even gamma only it's going to be in community for the time being but this is something that you can hopefully look forward to uh in the main mod before too long and the first of those two things is the uh, sticky detonator which is really cool so the sticky detonator which is of course I think it's from Halo 4 I can't remember if it's Halo 4 or 5 um, but of course it's a little pistol it shoots it it's got a little grenade that sticks to things and then blows up and it's just all sorts of fun and wackiness and uh, you gotta love it but we get to see that we get to see it uh, textured out and uh, the model and materials and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if there's a finished version in game floating around. I haven't seen that yet if there is, but like I said, we do obviously see that he had it in point at, or in game at one point, and you can see that he's got the textures and materials, but I'm guessing it still needs all the scripting to actually fire and function and do all that stuff, so that'll probably still be a ways out. Um, and then we have the M50 sidekick from Halo Infinite, of course, and uh, this is another nice little addition. It actually feels like more of a sci-fi pistol in uh, this than it does in the actual game. I think the thing is the M50 sidekick. I don't remember there being a giant massive um, like foregrip, trigger, guard, or whatever that's supposed to be on there. But... Um, it's been a while since I've seen a picture of the M50 sidekick. I just remember it being more like a normal pistol, so this might be something else. But anyways, guys, uh, it's been about 15 minutes. I did this video a lot faster than I was expecting to. I really tried to blast through it. I do apologize, but again, it's really early in the morning. It's like the day of release, and I'm just trying to get this out to you guys. So, very cool stuff. Very excited to show this off, and uh, can't wait to get this in-game. Alright guys, let me know what you guys are most excited for from today's video, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Take it easy.